Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm back in the garage, ready to pull some of them orders. Mostly eBay, I think, today. My hands are cold. It's cold out here. And it's weird, because I got the heat set to like 78. It's just not keeping up. Who'd have thought? Uh, but yeah, we got some orders in over the weekend. What, last time I recorded was like, was it Friday? Thursday? Thursday. It is now Tuesday. So, you know, don't be surprised when I read off a lot of orders. It's because it's been five days. It's been five days since I last did an order pull video. And therefore, you know, we got a lot of orders. But, you know, in general, overall, the orders are still down significantly. First item that we sold is right up here. Got this at the movie theater Sunday. I went to see a couple movies because I was over in Orlando. And they got this place that's got lots of good popcorn buckets. And, uh, you know, you get the, the thing about these, I've told you, you know, you get these and it comes with the large popcorn. The large popcorn's like 18 bucks with the little bucket it's 25 it's awesome though look at that slimer the awesome slimer bucket it's like 25 with that and i sold that for 50 plus ship so basically you get 25 bucks for free and a free popcorn i mean there's fees and stuff but i also got food there i think i ended up spending 50 dollars because i got like a hot dog uh nachos and a popcorn and a soda and it was like 50 bucks sold him for 50 bucks so basically everything i got at the theater to eat ended up being free and that's why I like to do it. It kind of kind of gets me free food at the movie theater. So that that's pretty cool. And it always sells fast if it's a good one like that. I mean, that one's pretty awesome. And that person probably has no Cinemark next to them. They probably collect Ghostbusters. So for them, it's like, you know, not a huge deal for them to spend a little money on. <sighs> Weirdly enough, I have two O snaps coming back for a refund. Two of them. And the people just said they didn't like them. Like, it wasn't anything wrong with it or anything. It's just like, oh, it wasn't for me. So I thought that was kind of interesting because I really like don't get many oh snap returns and I feel like I could probably I mean definitely right charge a restocking fee because what am I what am I going to do with them now they're now used I think I can go ahead and not refund them shipping even though I give free shipping but not refund them return ship I guess I can't control that I'd definitely charge a restocking fee I think that's what I'll do maybe mm, they didn't pay original shipping so yeah all I can do is charge restocking what's the most restocking fee you can charge because basically I can't even sell them now but then again, my cost was zero. That shouldn't really matter though, because my profit is still lost. Uh, so I sold this camera. It's a Nikon. I got this at a garage sale the other day. I paid up for it. I paid 20 or 25, uh, but that's because I knew it was good. And that sold for $119.79, $119.79. So nice quick profit too. I, I just listed that I think on Thursday. And then the other one is this Canon. I think this one was $15 at that same garage sale. This one is a sure shot. And it's like the Jap Japanese model or something. And that one sold for, no, nah, that's the other ones, the, the Japanese model. This is just <clears throat> Japanese model. This is just a standard sure shot. Autofocus, 38 millimeter. Anyways, sold that for $90, $89.99 plus shipping. So yeah, two cameras. That's what? That's like 200 bucks in cameras. I spent like 30. There's a lot of other cameras at that sale. I did spend quite a bit of time comping at the sale to make sure I got the good ones. And, uh, you know, I don't always leave that in the footage, but... Yeah, that, that is not, it wasn't just like, ooh, random cameras. I'm going to spend $25 and hope I do okay. I did comp them and make sure that they were good prior to buying them. Uh, speaking of those snaps, though, I did sell one on eBay. So I'm grabbing one of those. Uh, as always, $33.99 free shipping on that. Uh, yesterday I was listing some graphic novels. I did buy a bunch of comics at the flea market the other day. And I looked through a handful of them. I got enough listed to pay for my uh, my buy. And at this point, you know, I've still got like a whole bunch left. At this point, I'm just going to run them probably through whatnot and be done with it. Uh, but I did, I actually, I listed enough to double my, my buy price. I think I spent 130 and I listed like 260 worth. Uh, and so that doubles my money. And then anything I sell on whatnot is all profit. So, you know, I think that's sometimes a good method if you have a whatnot following and can sell things on whatnot. My voice is a little, a little scratchy this morning. Not sure why. I mean, I've had a busy, a busy couple of days with Anna's gymnastics meet. We were out in Orlando and then we went to the Webster, we being myself and the worm in my pocket. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. We went to the Webster, but I went to the Webster. Oh, here we go. I see it. Uh, I did meet up with Rod and Paul Philly Flipper while I was out there, and it was not a great day at the Webster Flea Market. It was like rainy all weekend. 
which really kind of put a uh, damper <laughs> on the whole thing. So, but it started late because of that. And then a lot of people didn't show up and it was just, it was kind of dead, but, and there was like just mud everywhere, but it was still fun. And I definitely made, made a good profit on the things I did buy. I just didn't buy as much as normal. Okay, this sold. This is a Mary Mayer little teddy bear plush. Every now and then I just list plush on eBay because I need listings. <laughs> You know, I'd gotten in the habit of just doing all of my uh, all of my plush on whatnot, but I buy so many plush. If I do them all on whatnot, I'm just not gonna have enough things to list on eBay. But then again, uh, let me see. Let me look at my my inventory over here. So I've got okay. So here's what I've got. I've got these two old toasters I should put on eBay. You see them back there? They're silver. They're General Electric. They're like fifty bucks each. I got this Sensi thing. I got these electronics I should put on eBay. Look at this popple thing that we found it's a cork board be cool that'd be cool for your disney pins but yeah but then all this is unlisted too so i'm i'm kind of getting a little a little death pile in the garage right now which isn't great i need to really focus on getting some of it gone i don't know what happened i will say there's always a chance for it to turn around but this star wars vinylmation autographed set i bought at the webster that i paid up for i paid like a hundred dollars i still have not sold a single one of those so i am getting concerned that it was not a very good buy it was kind of a, a shot in the dark because no one's ever even had those things well like as far as i could tell no one had ever listed those as autographed pieces before and i don't know if there's a demand it's well, clearly there's not a big demand because it hasn't sold yet oh so i don't know we'll say hopefully they sell i just need to sell like a hundred bucks worth to get my money back so hopefully that happens. Um, I did sell a hat, a Daytona hat, which I didn't really think would ever sell because the brim is in terrible shape. It's all messed up, it's all broken. I put right in the listing, bit brim damaged. I still think I'm gonna get a complaint and a return on it, even though I put that. Like I said, racing hat, corduroy issues, and then in the description I said brim is all broken. And so I'm pretty sure whoever buys it <laughs> is going to get it and be like, uh, this is totally destroyed, I don't want it. Um, but who knows? It was $16.99 free shipping. Maybe it's for display. For display, it would be fine. If you're not going to wear it, it would be fine. But for wearing, you can't really wear this. And it is a cool hat. Like if you put this on like a little mannequin head in the background and you like love daytona have a huge daytona collection huge racing collection it would be fine for that but i, I don't know if it's really wearable we'll see we'll see what happens with it but yeah i mean we had to be over in orlando for a competition and i had a competition for gymnastics so we were over there and uh instead of driving all the way home and then going to the webster because uh, orlando is actually closer to the webster than where i live i live pretty far I decided to just stay over there one extra night after the meet and drive from orlando and so that saved me a little bit of time but really only like what was it like an hour to drive there instead of two and a half hours so it saved me an hour and a half of driving i don't know if i'd do it again i don't know Hmm. Maybe if I had a better hotel. I had a pretty crappy hotel. All right, this sold. This is a Gospel Transformation Bible. Sold that for twenty-one twenty-five. I think we paid fifty cents for it at a yard sale plus five sixty-one shipping, and that is brand new sealed. Yeah. So we're in this hotel, and it it did that thing. It's funny. It did that thing where like you couldn't really adjust the temperature on the thermostat, and it was kind of freezing. It was like a nasty cold couple of days this weekend, and you know I was really cold, and I was like, man. I need to change it to turn on the heat. And I go turn on the heat, and the max the heat will go is like 68. Like that's that's what they've locked it down to, 68. And I remember seeing some sort of short form video on TikTok or YouTube or Facebook where someone said like, if you hold the up and down button, it'll like factory reset it and you can change it. And so I did it and then it made like all these weird numbers on the thermostat. And I was like, ah, I don't know what just happened. It's not working, I just went to bed. I woke up at two in the morning, it was 83 degrees. <laughs> Apparently I had like somehow reset it, but when I reset it, I guess it defaulted to like 83 degrees. So. I was like just dripping sweat because I had blankets on too because I had been cold. So that was pretty funny. Luckily, my family had already left, so they didn't have to deal with my my idiocy when it comes to uh, the temperature control. I sold this is a Brother printer, the P Touch Extra, and that sold for seventy two twenty five plus fifteen in priority shipping. Eh, not bad. So I'm I'm talking and justifying all last week this like idea of a freeze drying machine, right? Like, oh, I want to get a freeze drying machine. I'm going to sell some freeze dried candy. I'm going to make some money with it. I can use it in my cooking videos, blah, 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 right? You remember that. If you've been paying attention, I've been talking about that. Uh, if you've been doing something else, well, come on. You know, you just got to come watch every video then you won't miss it. But that's all right. I can give you a recap. I was, I had this great idea and this is, this is Dave, okay? <laughs> Anyone who's watched me for a length of time will know this. I get an idea and all of a sudden it's the world's best idea and I must pursue it immediately at full strength. Oh, this is uh, Thor, what am I looking for? Avengers Triumvirate. I'm looking for a comic book. So anyways, I go ahead and I do this 
And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get it. I talked to Tina. You know, we agree. Okay, Dave can buy his little freeze dryer machine because this is the latest exciting thing. And the company offered me like a 50% discount on buying it. So it's like this great deal and I can easily make the money back if I just sell X number of bags of candy. Well, you know, I'm, I'm looking into it, looking into it. And I'm like getting all excited about this like side candy thing. Anyways, I sold this. It's Avengers number 39, 12 cent comic for $22.43 free shipping over on eBay. You know, I'm sitting there, I'm like learning all about how do you do like candy business. You know, it's just my latest thing, right? And I'm just like, you know, anytime you're like working on a business idea, you get all excited. It's the best idea ever, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, because I was looking more into cottage food licenses. And first of all, from what I can tell in Florida, you don't need a cottage food license. Like, you sell it under cottage food law, but there's no specific license you have to apply for. I looked, I, I scoured the web and that seems to be the case, but it's irrelevant because even with a cottage food license, what, 139, no, 231, uh, I sold the lighthouse. Even with a cottage food license, you can't ship it out of state at all. Any candy or freeze dried candy you make, you can't ship out of state. So I'd be, I don't even know, how, how would you even sell online and limit, I mean, there must be ways to limit who buys online and make sure you don't ship to other states. So I guess I could do a little candy business, but be ultra little because if I was going to sell it online, I could only sell it within the state of Florida, which maybe there's a website that allows you to like block all other states from buying. That's disappointing because I thought it'd be fun to sell it everywhere. Oh, I can't find this lighthouse. I'm just trying to remember. I'm like, why am I just sitting here? <laughs> I got distracted. This happens to me a lot. I got distracted. Someone texted me. I was then looking at the text and researching that, and then I'm sitting there, I'm like, why am I even sitting here? It's because, it's because I can't find this lighthouse at all. I right, just got a white roof. It looks like this one right here, which is one I picked up three times. Yeah, it is this one. That's funny. I picked this up. I thought I was looking for number 139, but it was 171, so I did find it in the end. Uh, this one sold for 25 bucks free ship. That's right here very exciting uh it'll cost me 10 bucks to ship so 15 dollars for that lighthouse all right so up next i sold a little tiny felix the cat thing i almost ran this through whatnot i really did because i couldn't really find a good comp and you know i figured oh, i could probably get like five six bucks for this little felix the cat thing but i did google image search it and i found a worth point comp i looked at that and that comp was like 30 bucks and i was like you know there's no way, literally no way I'm getting 30 bucks on whatnot for this. Uh, so I listed out on eBay and it actually did sell in about a day for $26.50, a best offer. So, you know, it, it definitely pays to spend the time to list on eBay without a doubt. Um, and so I'm glad I did. Every now and then I'm, I'm doing smart things financially. Let me grab this over here. It's a action figure, in my action figure section, paratrooper. Um, it might be in this box of sealed stuff. Yep, it is. G.I. Joe paratrooper. I'll show you. Let me get this back. <clears throat> little paratrooper outfit set from the 90s, I believe. Brand new sealed. Had this for a long time. Thought I'd sell this for like 30 to 40 bucks. Didn't work out. Sold it for 15 plus ship, hopefully. Yeah, plus ship. Maybe 16. Hold on, let me look. Nope, 14.20. 14.20 plus shipping. Now this next item, this next item, I don't know where it is. Uh, I had it on a windowsill as decor. Ugly decor, but decor nonetheless. I mean, it wasn't so ugly that it didn't sell. I had it there for a long time and it could still be there, but my windows are now all blocked. So it was like literally up on a windowsill. So it might still be there. And if I recall correctly, it was maybe this one here. This one here, let's take a look. I just feel around. Is it there? No. So I probably moved it when I cleaned. <laughs> this might be unfindable. Let me look. Good news. It was not unfindable. It's this little monkey. This little monkey with like a broom tail. Really weird and obscure. Twenty-two forty-three free ship. Took a very long time to sell. I'm shocked it ever sold. But you know what? Someone wanted it. And I'll get like 15 bucks out of it. And I can't remember what I paid. I think I paid like a dollar or something. Many thanks for the special offer. I must have sent the best offer. Please wrap my monkey well for shipping and leave positive feedback when my package arrives. Thank you again. I hope you have a lovely Sunday. Kind regards. I will, uh, I will wrap it well. Uh, and then we sold a slot car out of bin three. And this I got recently. Oh, I got four in there. Let me make sure I get the right one. It's red. It's a Lambo. You're getting a Lambo. Gray wheels, it says. Does it really have gray wheels? Tina listed this. The uh, Lambo with gray wheels. Been great. 
and there's a slot car. Now someone told me I could test this with a nine volt battery. How does that work? We're gonna try to find out right now. Let me see if I have one. Yep, I do. I got that song stuck in my head from Aladdin, but I don't know the words where it's like, dun 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 dun. Oh, camera drop. So how does this work? Do I just put it on each side? That didn't do anything. Well, that certainly didn't work. Uh, hopefully that doesn't mean the cars are broken. The person told me they worked and uh, I tested all the five I have and none of them do anything with a nine volt battery. So I don't know, maybe they're all broken or maybe these cars operate on more than nine volts. That's possible. I don't know too much about slot cars. We'll see, we'll see if the person complains. That's how we'll figure it out. Uh, anyways, this slot car sold for $21.99 plus shipping on eBay. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully those cars work, or that car works. I guess we'll see what happens with this first one and then decide if I need to take down the other ones. Daredevil number 12 sold. I think that's this one right here, yeah. For $22.43 free shipping over on eBay. And then Daredevil 14 sold to the same buyer, which is this one, another 12 center, for $32.29 free shipping. So it's good these comics are still moving. I still have to do something with the rest of my comics that I haven't gotten graded yet. Uh, but I don't know. I, I don't. It's just a project. It's a project to do it, and I've got to take care of it. I've still been doing okay on the whole, like, intermittent fasting thing. I saw a couple of you in the comments say that you saw me doing the fasting, so you started to do the fasting. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to do this lighthouse thing again where I walk over here and look for 20 minutes and don't find it. Let me bring my phone with me this time. Uh, but yeah, a bunch of you were saying, not a bunch, probably three people said they were fasting as well. Uh, so that's kind of cool. It's a little hard with travel, but it's not hard. So that's the thing. That's the thing that's tricky, right? It's not hard to do fasting when you're traveling. It's, but it's, it's, it's hard to eat healthy while fasting while traveling. Let me say it that way, because it's pretty easy to just be like, listen, I'm not going to eat anything until we do our big family dinner, we do our family lunch or whatever it is we're doing while traveling, right? Like we met up with some friends and the goal was to just have a, oh, I see it, uh, a dinner together. And, you know, my fasting schedule, what I like to do with fasting is I like to eat my one meal. Fasting is when you just eat like once or twice a day. My one meal, I like to eat it at lunch because that way... And I might have explained this to you. I know I told Carrie on the phone. I can't remember if I talked about it in this uh, video or not. The idea is, you know, for me, if I eat it at lunch and I eat a nice big lunch, like 1,500 plus calorie lunch, then, you know, I probably won't get hungry again till like 8, 9 p.m. And at that point, I can just like ignore it. Or if I'm really, really hungry, go to bed. And then the next morning, you know, when you wake up in the morning, like right now, you're just not hungry because you just got out of bed and you just, for some reason, when you wake up, your hunger's kind of gone. And then at least for me, I don't get hungry till like, nine ten but then at that point i'm really close to eating again and i i'll eat my one meal anywhere from like 10 30 till noon right so somewhere in there i'll eat my one meal and you know like i said it works out for me because i'm always kind of close enough to the meal that it's not a big deal this is what sold it's a lighthouse it is new london connecticut oh, my brother used to live near there twenty dollars free shipping over on ebay that's been going good uh, the only thing that's tough is like when traveling like i was this weekend we were going out to dinner with uh, friends and dinner was at five. And so I ate my lunch, I think it was Friday at 11, the day prior. And then Saturday, dinner wasn't till five. So by 5 p.m. Saturday, I was ravenously hungry and I went to a Mexican restaurant and oh my goodness, the amount of tortilla chips that I ate with queso and guac was outlandish. And I, I remember seeing a short where someone takes like a whole bag of tortillas and just lays them on a table and says, would you eat this? And then they like snap their fingers and it's a bowl of chips. And they're like, well, you have, right? So like the chips and queso. So it wasn't healthy, but I, and I ate a ton. I, I kind of binged uh, at dinner that night. But when, all this to say, and then the next day I did the same thing, but at the movie theater. <laughs> but all this to say, after all that, um, I come home and I'm still down another pound, 186. So that's why I like fasting. So even though I feel like I cheated, I didn't because I only ate that one meal. And so I didn't cheat. And I even got candy at the theater. So this sold, this is uh, Team Effort Texas A&M. I bought that over on Dibnit from Mike the Death Pile Picker. I think I bought, bought it for five bucks or eight bucks. Sold it for 40 plus ship over on eBay. And I know there's some of you that are probably writing comments about, Dave, you know, you're not getting the right macronutrient mix in your diet. <laughs> you're probably right. I probably should get better about that. But you know what? I, I think just the fact that the scale is going down 
is probably a good start for me. Ow, falling. Um, where is this Nike thing? I sold a Nike club. My clubs are out of hand. Officially out of hand on the clubs. And I never listed the Scotty, Scotty Cameron because I don't know. I don't remember why. Um, but I need to do that. Is this a Nike? There's a Nike somewhere. There's a Nike SQ. I think it's called the Sasquatch driver. Is it a driver? Yeah, it's a driver. A Sasquatch Sumo. And I sold that over on eBay for 63 free shipping. So that's pretty good. Still, it's still a mess in here because we're working on, well, we, again, Tina has been working on whatnot shipping from the container. And because we're out of town all weekend, you know, she's still working on it as of today, which is Tuesday. But there was no shipping yesterday anyways because of President's Day. So it's not like we could have gotten it out earlier anyways. Uh, so the hope is after I record this, I'm going to pack all the eBay. She'll finish up the whatnot, or maybe I'll have to finish up the whatnot depending on time. And then I'll run it all to the post office today. So it goes out on Tuesday, which makes sense. Uh, this was sold Spider-Man. Another copy of this Ultimate Alliance slash Forza. And that is brand new sealed. Sold it for $12.74 plus shipping. Okay, so I, I got distracted again. I don't know what I was doing. Oh, my, my SD card died and then Tina started texting me and I was talking to her. Anyways, 10 minutes later, back to work. Uh, this Pokemon sold, I have a lot of these still. I think this is Bulbasaur. Brand new, 13.49, I think plus ship. Yeah, plus 5.15 shipping. Uh, and that's the third one of those I sold. I think I paid 50 or something, I can't remember. Uh, 45, 50 for a bunch of them. I think I paid around five bucks a piece, uh, which was a little too much, but I did it anyways because it was a friend at the flea market. And that's actually the biggest risk for me at the flea market is friends uh, because I want to like not negotiate Negotiate with them and I want to buy their stuff and help them out and then I end up spending a little more than I probably should All right, I'm gonna grab this. This is heavy So I'm gonna put the camera down and hope that it doesn't fall I feel like it's gonna fall. Don't fall camera You're gonna fall aren't you? No, it's gonna fall if I do that. Hold on. Let me put it on this table This is what I sold the giant milkshake maker from uh, Hamilton Beach. It's a commercial one so it's fancy and that sold over on eBay for a hundred. These aren't going to be that fun to ship. This is going to be based on all the whatnot stuff left and the eBay. I probably have two hours plus of shipping to do as soon as I'm done recording this. He <laughs> not looking forward to it, but it is what it is. Sometimes you got to ship. Okay. So I sold an eight iron ping and I have some of my pings over here. So I'm going to check over here. That'll be the easier one to pull if it's over here. It is. It's a ping zing two eight iron. What is it? Black dot. Yeah, black dot sold for 40 i think yeah 40 free shipping oh that grip feels weird on that i was watching a bunch of videos about how to re-grip golf clubs it does not seem that hard it seems like you just literally slice it with a, a razor knife and then roll it up i don't know it doesn't seem bad it doesn't seem bad at all so i might i might eventually do that but then again they sell fine with bad grips and i think a lot of people re-grip them to their favorite style so it might not even be worth re-gripping them let me know in the comments what you think, if I should be re-gripping clubs that have bad grips, or should I just sell them as is? All right, so I sold three bears, and someone did comment and say uh, on my picker video that they actually used to be a bear artist. And so I thought that was pretty cool. I think this is the first, no, that's not it. These bears, they're, they're kind of hard to find because they all kind of look a little bit similar. Someone did message me about a bear website, like where you sell bears, specifically designed for selling bears. I can't remember, I think it's something called Bear Rack or something, or Bear, Bear Barn. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I looked into it. I probably should maybe sell on there, but hmm, I don't know. It seems like work. Is it this guy? Well, I have a minor dilemma. I can't find an artisanal bear hat. Uh, but anyways, I sold this Land Before Time plush. Someone came in and bought three plushes off me. Land Before Time, this one, which is like a 12 inch mohair bear. And he's got a black hat that I don't seem to see. I'm gonna have to look a little longer for that. And this cute one that does like little music, this little uh, red scarf one. So total, I'll tell you what the cost was on those. I don't know where that hat is. I hope it didn't like fall on the ground and then get lost. This is what the hat's supposed to look like. It's this like black felt thing with green. Hmm. I can ask Tina, she might know. Unless I have another one that looks the same. Anyways, he sold, one with the hat, sold for $47. The one, the Land Before Time one sold for $16.99 free shipping. The $47 was plus shipping. And the other little guy, $35 plus shipping. So those are the three 
bears it sold. Ugh, hopefully, hopefully I can find that hat, but I don't know. I'm concerned about it. And then we sold a comic, Tales of Suspense, Iron Man number 99. That's a lot of comics. And then I sold something over on Macari. Glove, I believe a glove. Iron Man number 99, $25 free shipping over on eBay. And then a glove, you know, I gotta get, I gotta get these all pulled. There's a lot of orders, a lot of orders, bunch of whatnot. Oh, it's gonna be a long morning. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna edit a bunch of footage today. And then I was like sitting in bed. I was like, oh crap, I have to do this and this and this and this and this. And so once again, I won't have any time to edit footage probably today. Sometimes all said and done. This Wilson glove sold over on Macari for I think 14 bucks. So it's not a good one, but it did make me think it's probably just about time for people to start buying baseball stuff. Pretty sure baseball season starts up here any day. So uh, it's probably the time to start listing those gloves if you have any, sourcing them bats. Dude, I have so many bats. I should probably spend a day just listing bats. Problem is a lot of my bats have bad grips. And so I'm gonna have to like, again, I got those with the idea of, oh, I'm gonna regrip them, but, oh, I did sell something over on Posh. Let me see how many things I sold. Oh, $100 too for the Poshmark order. Back to orders, my sales, yeah. Yamaha, let's take a look. UAV RX V671. X V671. Yep, okay, so I'll show it to you. I'm not gonna pull it out right now. I'm gonna have to get some stuff cleared out of the way. But this big uh, Yamaha receiver sold for $100 over on Poshmark. So 100 on Posh, like 15 on Macari. And then let's look at the eBay. Oh, eBay, I just got another sale. I should probably just pull it, huh? Yeah, it's a Sony. The Sony. CCTV camera and it should be over here with all my electronics. Let me get this out too. Just try to get it all all out the door and be done with it. Where's the main picking sticker? That's where it says it is. It's right here. Well, CCTV camera sold for 25 bucks on eBay. Uh, people use these like they replace their security camera because something goes wrong. Someone breaks it, something like that. So $25.41, $6 shipping on that one. Whew. That was a slog. We got a lot of orders. Let's see how much total in orders was that. And then I get to ship. You know you're jealous. You totally want to ship all this stuff. <laughs> uh, 1,235 on eBay. So 1,335, 1,350 basically with Posh, eBay, Mercari, and then whatnot. I think we did like 1,400 on Friday and whatnot stuff, but it is hard to ship stuff. We're getting down to really hard to ship stuff on whatnot. So are in the container. So that's getting it's getting harder for Tina, for sure. She mentioned it, so I should probably go easy on the huge items. I don't think I'm going to do an auction from the container this Friday just because I'm really behind on editing footage, and I've got to get some edited, and so I just don't think it's a good idea, but I don't know. Mm, yeah, I probably won't do it. Maybe I will. I don't know, because I'm not going to get to do it the next week because Carrie's going to be in town. So maybe I should just go ahead and do one more before he comes. Hmm... But this is coming live Wednesday. I should really let you know if I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, I should probably talk to Tina. Let me talk to Tina about it. Uh, you know, you can always just check my whatnot and see. I do have a whatnot Wednesday night, tomorrow, tonight for you, uh, where I'm going to sell probably everything on this shelf that I haven't gone through. Mikey's coming in. I need something for him to work on. So I think I'm going to have him work on listing this whole shelf and I don't know, some of the stuff in these bags, plushies, toys, more pop culture -y stuff. Got a bunch of Disney stuff, Godzilla. So I'll have him work on that today, and that'll be Wednesday night. Now, Friday, I don't know. If you're interested in checking it out, I'm sure I'll go. If I do it, it'll be live on this channel, so you won't miss it. All right, that's enough of that. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I got work to do. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.